Aroma so fragrant but free so sweet. That's love, joy and peace and kindness That's and sweet. patience The lover of your all of my life So patent Two hours well, in the guys, spirit then it's curtain For instalment of the Storytime Sundays Again guys, appreciate you guys following me on this journey And I think in this episode we're going to be talking about education Because this has been an area that I have not been the greatest in i've always been quite average and it's safe to say yeah, that i've been quite ashamed of my grades i'm gonna keep it really really honest i mean i've not been someone who's been proud to tell people you know what i got this i got that now nah. and uh it was very difficult for my parents to understand that growing up that you know not everybody's gonna be a doctor lawyer what's the other one there's doctor lawyer scientist uh physician you know, all these things, I was never going to be that, you know what I mean? So I want to talk about me with my grades and, like, you know, prim I'm going to start with primary school. I know some people would be like, why would you want to start there? My primary school grades all the way up to uni, I think it's going to be very important to sort of understand the sort of kid I was. So let's get into it. Primary school, my grades, again, very, very average. What, what did we sit? It was uh, the SATs, SATs, sat them, again, average grades, right? Went to two different secondary schools. And it's funny because in my second secondary school my grades were actually all average nothing was outstanding I didn't really get any A stars I didn't get any A's I just got B's and C's in my final grades and I think part of that was the fact that I was very shy I was never somebody to put my hand up and be like yo miss I've got a question if I have a question I'm telling you it's like once per year in my school now the teachers if they see me raising my hands I'm telling you there could be hundred hands raised up in that room the teacher is like no 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 Oh, Femi's got a question like I will never forget how excited my teachers used to be whenever I used to raise my hand I always respected my teachers would never make me feel silly for asking a question even if the question was maybe a silly one because you know what that does to somebody who's shy if you've got a question and your teacher shuts you down you're gonna be like well why am I gonna ask questions again so that you can make me look like an idiot in front of the whole classroom I was never one to ask questions I never want to raise my hand secondary school again bang average grades nothing exciting nothing in the ordinary to the point where in the uh, sixth form that I went to they said that the grades they weren't actually sufficient enough to do A levels then said okay cool let me do B Tech Media so my family now finds out about this oh my gosh these people <laughs> they literally called a meeting in my grandma's house to say how can you be doing B Tech and I'm like oh come on man I can't do anything for myself do you know what I mean like they're like how can you do BTEC so now and I go to my form tutor and I'm saying okay cool I want to do A level and he kind of knew that this was not something that I wanted to do he could tell that this was something that was pressured on me to do and he was like are you sure this is what you're going to do da, 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 da. and I remember I was looking at the subjects I'm not even joking it took me such a long time to choose my subjects because again didn't really know what I wanted to do but I thought these sound better than whatever in it so I remember I chose media studies business studies and IT those the three that I chose. I couldn't choose four because I didn't have enough. No, sorry, my grades were not good enough to do four subjects, so I done so I done three. And uh oh my days, like you know what my grades were? E E D. E E D. Mind you, don't don't get me wrong, I was doing tomfoolery in, in uh, college, like you know, I was playing cards, I was messing around. You know, all I cared about was, you know, looking good for the ladies and Bruh. being a ladies man, whatever. You know, so I'm not going to lie. I have to admit it, but I still studied. And even though I studied as hard as I could, mom was getting EED. You know what's so crazy? That day was mad because I remember thinking mom was going to finish me. I go home now. I show my mom these results. And mom was like, <laughs> this has to be a joke, right? Mom was laughing. I remember she was on the phone and then she had to kind of put auntie on hold. And you know, she was looking at the grades and she was laughing like, oh, this this, this can't be. And I was like, no, this is the grades. And she said, wait. You're being serious. I was like, yeah, mom, the, the, the grades. Yo, my mom was like, so wait, what were you doing in college? How can you get these grades? EED, what were you doing in college? I said, I was studying. No, you were not studying, because how can you study and get the. <laughs> oh, my days, that day was long. My mom was like, there's no way you went to college and you got EED. And you know, you know how they are, they're like, ah. This is why I came to this country, so that you can get EED. Oh, that day was so long. My mom couldn't understand it because it's like, you know, my grades have never been that bad. But remember, if my grades in secondary school are average, in college, it can either only be average or it can be worse. And how you, how everybody knows college is, college is harder than secondary school. Let's, let's keep it real, right? So, or should I say, A-levels is harder than GCSEs. So obviously, my grades are going to get worse, which they did. And uh, yeah, that day was long. You know how they are, she'll, Presume the phone call, she'd be like, ah, we never believe my son, he got EED. Is that why, you know, we send him to college for them to be disgraceful? <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's not that deep. Like, 
a course like the course slash module leader the one who would look at your UCAS applications when you're going to university you know she advised me and she said that because of your predicted grades they can only predict you one level higher my predicted grades was like what it was like ddc so basically that's only enough for me to do a foundation degree and i was like Ugh. and then obviously i explained it to my mom and i said this is the only way for me to go to university or i would have to reset the whole of first and second year and i don't want to do that i'm like what up imagine i start first year and i'm starting with the wait hold on what, what year would i start with Ha! Huh. imagine i restart first year again so let's say i've finished second year but then i would have to restart first year and then i'll basically be starting with the year nines that i left when i was in year 11 impossible that is not happening so <laughs> you know i explained to my mom my mom was like okay cool this is how it has to be so I did my best i got c d e e in a2 in my A levels, that's why I got C, D, E, E. Some of you are gonna be like, wait, hold on, do you not have three? So basically, cause I did so bad, um, I had to pick up two AS subjects and I was dropping IT cause I just did not like the module. I remember, I think after like the fifth, sixth week, the fifth or the sixth week, I just gave up on that module. I did not like IT at all. But C, D, E, E was enough for me to get into um, a college and how it worked is that that college was under the umbrella of the university so the university rules still applied but it was under college conditions so I did that for two years done the foundation degree I think I got 61% so they said you can either go into your final year or you can go into university and start on the second year of the, of the course that you want to do here's me thinking wait hold on man struggled for so long Man has had average grades and you want me to start a second year from university? Impossible. Send me to straight to final year. I'm done. And you know what's so funny? When I was in final year now and I'm actually going to the university, my friends are seeing me like, yo, like, tell me where you been? I ain't seen you. I'm like, yo, I've been about. Friends, I'm sorry to lie to you, but I was actually going to the college campus, even though it was still under university rules. That was why you never saw me in university. So I'm sorry to break it to you for my friends who are gonna watch this. But yeah, that was pretty much how that went. And there's even lots that I'm skipping, but to, to be fair, I don't want this video to be like 40 minutes long. Um, maybe I'll speak about kind of a lot of different things that happened because my goodness, there was so much that happened. Maybe I'll speak about that in another video, but um, I now do a piece of coursework now. And this coursework, I remember I put my blood, sweat and tears in the final year. Tell me why I got 50. Bruh. I got 50 out of 100. I put my blood, sweat and tears in this. And the reason why it was 50 and it was not anything lower was because my references, my punctuation, spelling, grammar, it was all perfect. <laughs> oh my days. So imagine if that wasn't on point, I would have got like 40 something or even 30 something. I would have failed it. I was like, wow. And if, and if not for the group project work that I did, my grades would have been either a third or I would have failed uni and i would have had to reset the whole thing again you know i failed one of my exams so i had to reset it because i just did so so poor i did have to defer the exam did it again i did better but not by much again got like i think i got like a 2-2 two -two in that exam and i only just about scraped a 2-2 two -two. i literally just scraped 50 like 50 51 i remember i got in between then wow that day i remember i was so ecstatic i said oh my days i got a 2-2 two -two. you know what the most important thing about that whole journey was even though i had really struggled i found it really tough it was such a difficult thing for me i will never forget that day in september my dad flew in from nigeria it's just me my mom and my dad we're driving to my university unfortunately we we're late we had to park somewhere else so we couldn't get enough pictures but when he called my name i'm walking to collect my certificate and i can see my parents from a distance i can genuinely say that is the first time in my whole life that i really felt like my parents were proud of me not to say that you know they weren't proud of me if you were to say is there a moment in your life where you believe that your parents really were proud of you that was that moment i will, I will actually never forget it. and also even just before that i saw one of my friends from college that i haven't seen so i remember when well, we gave him a high five I'm like yo what's going on and i see my parents just there and i'm like oh my god that was such a great feeling you know i really really wish people can experience that just seeing your parents even if it's not your parents seeing maybe your loved one or seeing maybe your sibling or whatnot and they're just proud and they're like wow because i knew my dad was beating his chest and he was saying that's my son i knew my mum was like yes that was the boy that was traveling up and down god knows how much during the week during the month to go uni 
and to know his exam results and you know it's crazy because that degree i barely used it i think only one job that i've applied to since now have only ever wanted to know my degree and that's it that's the craziest thing because even with that degree i didn't know what to do with it i didn't apply for any graduate jobs i didn't do any degree no not degree apprenticeship that doesn't apply i didn't do any apprenticeships i didn't do any grad schemes i didn't do any placements i didn't do any of that nothing to kind of help me to get onto you know a scheme that would allow me to actually use you know the knowledge part of the degree just didn't care you know um i was just more kind of focused on actually just finishing uni and uh if i was to say fast forward now what i've learned working over the last so where i finished so over the last seven years i have learned so much in the work world compared to whatever my degree taught me my degree was just more of a more of a door to help me get through but the actual experience that i've learned now it means way more than whatever my degree is i'm telling you now because you know when i apply for jobs and i go for interviews the stuff that i've picked up was not from my degree it was actually from my experience of doing these things you know constantly day in day out and i'm just like wow even though i had the most average grades from primary secondary school college to uni i still managed to find an avenue for me that works and that was operations and that was because i worked a startup role and startup roles are fantastic for kind of figuring out what you want to do. Do I like sales? Maybe not. Do I like negotiation? Mm, maybe not. Do I like onboarding? Mm, maybe not. Do I like doing presentations? Mm, maybe not. Do I You're kind of exposed to all these different things. So maybe even like legal compliance, HR. And what's great is, you know, if you start up in a very small company, you can kind of specialize into something that you like later on because you've been exposed to all parts of the business and that way you can actually gain valuable experience. And then once you've got that, you can then move on and make more other things. But that's going to be a video for another day because I'm definitely going to talk about salary negotiations I'm definitely going to be talking about interview tips and all these different things because it's things that we don't talk enough about and it's things that we've never actually been exposed to in school yeah this was a bit of a long one but you know what it's not really anything this video wasn't really anything interesting this is more of kind of like my whole education journey like it's been crazy like all oh my days like to think that I'm where I am right now I'm in a job that I like right now you know I'm making good money I can't complain you know I have access to all different types of things that's going on i've got access to different networks i can see you know people are making like ridiculous amounts of money a day like 500 600 seven pump um i'm seeing people make like between you know 500 to like a thousand pounds a day you know i'm exposed to these things and it's really encouraging for me to see because you know we don't have these conversations when we're younger do you know what i mean so but yeah, that's the video, guys. It's been your boy for Muzi. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Again, not much of a laughy, jokey one. This is more of a, you know, deep one for me. It took a lot to actually say this because, man, and I know I was going to watch this and be like, you know what, well done, son. Um, and I'm going to say thank you, mum, for watching. But, guys, it's been your boy for Muzi. Um, it's like, it's really late, and I want to support my friend. She's streaming now. And I need to eat, I'm so hungry, but guys, take care. Like more fire, bro, it's the I same thing. Word man. make your flame shrink. Cause there's light in the word and the light that's fire, that's how the chain link. What shall I render, Lord? Your mercy so tender so and your grace so great. I will spray back to sender. See never sly and so slender. So She'll slender. suck you in and set you up if you ever try friend up. I'll put a ring on light.